inside the bowl. In the world today. Why classified documents keep showing up at Mar-a-Lago. Right now, the potentially classified documents, once used by President Joe Biden, documents had been found at the home of former Trump Vice President Mike Pence. Does everybody have confidential documents? Like a, like hey, babe, do we have any U.S. top secret confidential documents in the house? I don't know. Maybe to A, quote, small number of classified what? documents were... What do you mean, check the playroom? What the... No, 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 no. Department of Homeland Security, the Defense, Space Force. We gotta get rid of this stuff. Blue Cruise 1.2. We'll keep that. Can't recycle biohazards. We'll just take a little peek and see what's in this one. The Golden IPMA. This is what holds Blue Cruise 1.2. They'll never know. <laughs> hey guys, this is Dan with Gears and Gadgets. Thanks for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed that intro. This is Blue Cruise 1.2, which is Ford's next version of hands-free driving. Before you go down the rabbit hole of trying to figure out how to get this done through FDRS and buying all the appropriate equipment to install it, which is not cheap, not only was this a process just to install the module, but there was also quite a bit of troubleshooting that went into actually getting this on the truck as well. Uh, but for now, let's go ahead and head out to the truck and talk about Blue Cruise 1.0 compared to 1.2, and I'll show you guys some of the significant changes. So let's head out on the road. This is what's coming, and what's coming is pretty incredible. So as we're rolling down the road here in Blue Cruise hands-free mode, this is the 1.2 version. We'll talk about the original one. The original one, did a whole lot of just ping-ponging back and forth off of the, the lane lines. It wasn't nearly as bad as some more basic lane centering out there. As a matter of fact, I'd say it was like top tier lane centering, but it still would kind of drift in the lane itself. As I'm passing a Scottsdale PD here, I've thought to myself many a times with the old Blue Cruise that if I were a police officer behind me that I very well might pull myself over for drifting within my own lane. So I would kind of say that the original Blue Cruise drove very similar to an uncertain teenager behind the wheel. The truck would be kind of bouncing within the lane itself, and then it would get behind a vehicle, and it would kind of stab the brakes, and it was just a little bit jerky here and there. The whole process just felt a little uncomfortable. I was fine with it, passengers were not. I had several passengers comment about how uneasy the system made them feel. Not anymore. Blue Cruise 1.2 has, first of all, solved all of that kind of wandering, meandering through the lane itself. It stays very planted. I mean, I'm cruising here in the truck. You can see the wheel is barely moving. I mean, it's, it's making the same adjustments that I will be making if I were driving myself. What is new is lane changing. Just by tapping the blinker, the truck changes lanes itself. Let's switch lanes to the right here. Oh, didn't switch. There we go, switching lanes to the right. It's awesome. That's the one thing I notice is that when you go to switch lanes is that if you're going too slow and the lane next to you is going faster, it won't do it, um, which is smart. I don't want it pulling out in front of somebody over to the side who's you know going to come up and smash into the rear end of me and I actually tested that out on my way out filming where I had somebody coming up pretty fast but I had enough distance to kind of test it out and I hit the blinker and it did not go so when you combine a much smoother tracking with the ability to switch lanes it's an absolute game changer this feels so much better than the original version so let's switch over to the right here we have an opening it'll just take me over to the right and it does it so smooth. The other thing Blue Cruise does here is it takes these sweeping corners. First of all, it takes them in general. A lot of times the original Blue Cruise would just hand it back to you in these kinds of scenarios, or it would keep going through these, these curves, but it would do it at the same set speed. So it would get to be a little unnerving at times when Blue Cruise would just kind of fly you into a corner. It's nicer now to see the truck is kind of like just 
easing through that corner a little bit more, slowing down a little bit. There was only one spot that I was noticed. I was kind of hoping that it would work now through like a bit of like a gentle-ish S curve. I say gentle, but it's actually, it's kind of aggressive. Up here in Scottsdale, there's a section of road that has a, a, some meandering turns on my way to film this video. It, it did kick back out and give me control. Uh, but it told me to take control. I did. I, you know, worked through those corners. And then after you get to those corners, it then takes back over again. And bam, you're back in Blue Cruise. From what I've been told, these animations are not updated. So the animations that you're seeing, I've seen a couple little tweaks here and there. Now it says watch the road a little more passively before it chimes in. And I would imagine that there's additional animations coming uh, as this software gets updated. Because as of right now, the instrument cluster has not been updated to support Blue Cruise 1.2, just the hardware itself. So it's, it's, it's doing it, but it's not showing me the final product of it. Uh, matter of fact, this isn't the final product of it, so it is subject to change. And right now I'm gonna take control, do a lane change, let Blue Cruise take back over, and keep on trucking along here. I believe Blue Cruise 1.2 will eventually notify you that you should change lanes. I think it'll be smart enough to be able to figure that out if it's not already doing it now and just not notifying me because of the animations. But all in, it's a much more pleasant experience. I've put enough miles on it now to just test it out and kind of feel what it's doing. The other nice thing that I've noticed is the lane biasing. So now it will actually, if you get up alongside of a tractor trailer, instead of keeping you tracked straight down the center of the lane, which when you have a tractor trailer next to you, can be a little bit intimidating. It kind of shifts you over to the other side a little bit to get you away from that, that vehicle. I think it's important for not only the driver to feel that level of comfort, but again, the passengers. So this will be a spot to demonstrate, which it's very hard for me to demonstrate how it's not stabbing the brakes anymore. This is where having hands-free driving in this kind of traffic is very nice. Coming into traffic here, I'll back it off and tell it to keep a little bit more distance. You do kind of need to figure out when and where you can shorten that distance and when you know you can maximize the distance. When you start coming into known traffic, I like to just back it off a little bit because then it makes these braking moments more gentle. It's less terrifying for the vehicles coming up behind you because you're just keeping a little bit more of a buffer. But again, it is now doing it very smooth. It's also accelerating out of this more smooth than what it used to. I found that the original Blue Cruise version, it would do a good job of keeping distance, but then once somebody took off in front of you, it would just like gun it almost. So let's move over. And it was just, it was kind of herky-jerky and, and wasn't confidence inspiring. Again, that is all changed now. As you can see, I'm coming up against somebody who's not even on the brakes and the truck is just doing a good job of keeping that distance. So I'll get on the brakes here, shift over, I'll re-enable Blue Cruise. I'm gonna shorten my distance back up. It's kind of something you're always toying with is how much distance to keep because too much distance, you get stuff like this where somebody cuts in front of you. Even now, that was a first. If somebody cut in front of you previously, it, it would really work hard to like slow you down quick to get back to having that distance and now it just did it more gently much more pleasurable. It should kick Blue Cruise off here as I get on this exit. There we go, kicked it off. And now it's telling me to take control. So I will do that. So we are heading down a section of 60 here that has been milled up for a while. And this is where the original Blue Cruise actually had a couple times sort of terrified me. I was able to capture on camera an instance where one of these lines where the road is, they mill it up and there's old traffic markings from previous projects or just times that they've shifted traffic patterns. And the old Blue Cruise would catch either a line down the road or some old markings and just try to veer me across the road. That is where I start to take objection with the naming of hands free because it gives you the ability to kind of look around and be, you know, outside of driving. There was one spot that it used to do it, did not do it. And being hands-free or that nomenclature really invites people to be paying less attention. And I think that's a dangerous naming scheme. I also take an objection to Tesla's autopilot for that same reason is all of these things need to be engineered to the lowest common denominator of consumer. So this is a spot that used to have this problem with the old Blue Cruise all the time. 
and hopefully it has been solved now. I mean, you really have to be ready to grab the wheel right here. Nope, went right through it. So it's nice to see it improving. All in, I think this Blue Cruise 1.2 though is absolutely amazing. So it's good to see those things. I mean, testing it out to really get some confidence is, is important, but also never being complacent because I still think these systems have a long way to go. So let's get back to the studio here and, and we'll talk about that. To wrap this video up, well, the pricing, it's a big deal. And I think there's going to be a lot of talk in the near future about whether these systems are worth it or not worth it. When I bought my truck, it was very early in the Blue Cruise. I don't think they even had a name Blue Cruise yet. And because of that, the way that they priced these trucks out was there was a $995 charge for the hardware and then there was known subscription fees coming. Nobody really knew what it was going to be at the time, I believe. It has now come out and they're charging $600 for three years. I have a problem with that in terms of paying for a subscription that is a minimum of three-year commitment because if you wreck your vehicle, if you trade your vehicle in, you're basically out whatever the remainder of the money is for the timeline of that subscription. I don't really like that. Now, the interesting thing to note here is that the price change has been significant. But now Ford is selling Blue Cruise hardware and the three years all at the point of purchase. It is $1,995. Remember, I paid $995 for the hardware at the time. So that means it is now $1,000 more expensive to get Blue Cruise. Factoring in the $600 subscription fee, basically the hardware went up the way I see it is an extra $400 for the hardware. So $1,395 for the hardware plus $600 gets you to the $1,995 for the three-year subscription. It's also kind of a harder pill for me to swallow now because as an early adopter, I paid $995 for the hardware. And now I need to come out and pony up the extra $600 for the three-year subscription. I'm betting a lot of people who are in the similar boat as I am are going to opt out of the $600 fee, especially with how good lane centering is in and of itself. The only thing you're really gaining that people I think are going to be assessing in these expenses is a better version of lane centering that's hands-free, the ability to change lanes hands-free, the lane biasing where the truck will shift itself over as it's driving itself away from bigger vehicles, which is nice. But is it worth $600 over three years? That's something you have to figure out. I, I, I'll pay for it mainly because I have the YouTube channel and I'm interested to see the iterations of it coming down the pike. But I don't know if I didn't have this YouTube channel, if I would make that kind of expense, unless I was doing a ton of long distance driving. So if I was somebody who's making frequent trips that are over maybe 200 miles round trip type distance, yeah, maybe I would pay for it. If I was going back to my days as a construction project manager driving around town going to job sites, maybe half an hour out, half an hour back, I probably would just stick with the lane centering adaptive cruise control. But that's a decision everybody else is going to have to make for themselves. I don't like that it's three years. That's my take on it. Again, let me know in the comments down below. What do you think? Also, what do you think about hands-free driving in general? Probably have a couple more videos coming out in the near future, maybe comparing the differences between hands-free Blue Cruise, Tesla's autopilot, and then maybe some of the other options that are out there as well. But with that being said, guys, thank you very much for tuning in. If this is your first time tuning in, please hit that subscribe button down below. Remember, likes go a long way to support the channel. See you guys next time.